you want a cheap daily run around. Keep your pride and joy sports car tucked away in the garage or off-road. What do you go for? The logical choice is Ford Fiesta, Vauxhall Corsa, cheap as chips. And if you've got two, three thousand pound, surely that's the logical decision. But we're not always logical. And if you're happy to take a degree of risk, the reward can be quite surprising. Because this week, I'm taking a look at this. £3,000. Yes, you heard me right. £3,000. Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Welcome to Fast and Fun. So this car is a 2004 Mercedes S320 CDI with 137,000 miles on the clock. And let me start by saying 137,000 miles on one of these is actually really low mileage. Plumb these into Auto Trader and two or 300,000 miles is certainly not unheard of. In fact, there's one member of one of the groups that's done 500,000 miles in their 320 CDI. Front engine, rear wheel drive, as standard, develops just under 200 brake horsepower. Not something that's gonna set the pulse racing in such a big, heavy car. But this owner has decided to up the power just by a simple remap and has lifted the power now to a more reasonable 250 horsepower. It's not, I'm expecting to set the pulse racing on B roads, but it could be the perfect A road and motorway cruiser. Inside Mercedes speak, this is the W220 model, built between 1999 and 2005, and it really did come with a whole range of diesel and petrol engines, um, ranging from inline sixes to petrol V6s, V8s, and in fact, V12s. And what's the first thing that you notice? It's a big car. In fact, it's a very, very big car. And this, as new, was 62,000 pound. And the owner paid only a month or two ago a shade over £3,000. £3,000. Now, and, and what it, what's he done since he's had the car? He's put new wheels on. So the alloys have been replaced. These have come from a CLK 55 AMG. And believe it or not, they are 19-inch alloys. <laughs> Stood back, they look like 16s or 17s because the car is so huge, it just dwarfs these 19 inches. He's put four new tyres on, and then he's took it to a specialist to remap it. Could have remapped it much higher, but safely at 250. All that, plus the buying of the car at just over 3,000. The car owes him about 4,000 pound. That is incredible value for money. It's a Mercedes Benz. You're buying a premium brand. And the S-Class was the premium of the premium brand. But it is a little bit risky. You see, in the 90s, Mercedes-Benz were built like tanks. They were the go-to. They were, without shadow of a doubt, at their pinnacle. But come the late 90s into the 2000s, Mercedes engineers got pushed down a level or two. And it become, they started to become run more by finance people. And corners were definitely cut. And reliability definitely suffered. And there's a few bits and pieces here that don't quite look what you'd expect from a Mercedes Benz. And with reliability on something as complex and comprehensive as an S-Class, does come with a, a degree of risk. 
I suffered that on my 2003 SL500 that I ran for a, a couple of two, two or three years. So, as normal, I want to walk around the car, pick out some brilliant features of this car, some of the, what was cutting edge technology 20 years ago. The length of this S-Class, it's just incredible how long this car is and they did incidentally come in the L version, which is short for the limousine version, 12 inches, so an extra foot in length. Um, incredible, 30 centimetres longer. I mean, this is not, this is just a standard length and my God, a good job it is. I think that'd be too long personally. Um, looking at the front of it, a couple of things to pick out is the Mercedes-Benz emblem. Um, always prone in the 80s and 90s was these to be pulled off by vandals etc just just love the look of it and then I don't know how well this picks up but you can see this that's over the front of the um, uh, grill that's for the adaptive um, cruise control which I'll talk about once we get in the car one of the first vehicles I think it was the world's first ever vehicle with adaptive cruise control um, I've talked about the alloys Came off a CLK 55 AMG that the new owner has only just put on. 19 inches, they've got drill disc brakes because obviously there's a, there's a lot of weight here, two-ton car. Um, the archers and sills, I've had a quick look along the car. Uh, my SL500 of the same period suffered badly on the rear archers. There's a few small areas, but it's relatively negligible, certainly for a car that's only... I say only cost about three, just over three thousand pound. Incidentally, on Auto Trader, you can pick these up from as well. They start at about one to two thousand pound. Um, not suggesting you buy one for that value because there's probably some sheds out there. Um, don't let mileage put you off though. If this is something that you're considering, these cars, especially the diesels, they can take huge, huge miles. So don't let miles put you off. Round the back. Very, very understated, um, no exhaust that you can see. Being the diesel, um, being an S-Class, the exhausts are tucked up underneath and behind. Um, it's just twin exhaust, the, uh, the lower rear bumper. Got parking sensors on here again, just, just mass very well. <laughs> it's, you can see it has had badging on at some point, but that's been taken off. It's always great that unless you've got a sort of an SL, uh, an S500 or an S600 to generally get deep badge these cars. Couple of brilliant features of this and shows the period we're in. This car's what 20 years old so even in the back you've got very plush polished chrome um, as you get in just to lift the, the, um, the space, huge space here in the back really a four-seater um but you could get four large adults in here a couple of really great features this came with a smoking pack what period are we on here so as well as your electric windows you press this and out pops a cigarette ashtray and also your lighter um <laughs> how things have changed in 20 years and then if you look upwards You've even got your own vanity, if I can reach that, your own vanity mirror to make sure you're looking your best when you arrive at your destination. This is because so many S-classes were used by the super rich, celebrities, etc. in the time, that that's why they were so well stacked. If we look inside the car, looking at the dials there reminiscent bmw there with that big central odometer that runs its way right round um to 160 you've got the rev counter on the right hand side and then you've got your temp and your fuel on the left um if you look it's got the wood trim dash it's having owned SL500 again, similar. It's Although it's plush, it's not as well fitted as the SL. The SL, all this was leather with, st with stitching as well. This is definitely lower grade plastic and rubber um, than something like the SL. Um, this is very in keeping with the period though. 
the Mercedes Infontaine system clearly showing its age and a whole range of different buttons. I'm not going to go through every single one, but there's a few that I wanted to, to pick out because I think they are um, quite entertaining. So one here is this button down here. This is the collision warning um, so this is will give you an audio tone if the if it's selected if the car thinks you're travelling too fast and if there's a risk of you having an accident it will give you an audio tone to basically say brake now and then just below it is this this uh, rotary switch and this allows you to change your distance to set your distance for your adaptive cruise control so as your car gets up behind a car. If you're too far or too close, you can adjust it with that dial there. Fantastic technology. Lots of different cubbyholes, drinks older in there. Again, we obviously, everybody used to smoke in the early 20s, uh, in the early 2000s. So, um, and then the biggest ever cubbyhole in there for everything that you want, including bulbs by the looks of it. And it's just, it's just a... <laughs> a really nice place if you look on the right hand side again we've got i mean this is uh so many different positions here for your um seating position it's got heated seats as well as vented seats as well for cooling and then all your electric windows etc down in the lower right position and your boot release as well there we go that's a look around this big barge of a car and I suppose the question is how well does it ride um, what's it like to drive it, apparently the owner says um, on a good run you'll quite comfortably get into the mid 30s which for such a big heavy car and such an old car that's that's pretty impressive um, let's see what the performance is like let's see what it handles like and let's see if this is something that could be considered as your daily driver So the first road I wanted to take it on was this A road, um, just to see what it's like at sort of faster speeds, what the ride's like. I've just come through my village and there's a couple of areas in the village that are terribly potholed um, uh, and very crashy. And I, I go through in second gear in, in most of my cars and tiptoe between all the potholes. This road, it rode over them really well i mean it may have 19 inch alloys on this now but the sidewalls are still i think the 50 um profile so there's still quite a lot of give in those tires and and the ride quality it comes on air suspension i think it's called the i think it's the same again as the sl the active body control <sighs> can be notoriously expensive to fix if it goes wrong um this is all touch wood everything seems to be working absolutely fine in this so far um and it does help with the ride no end. Sat here at 55 miles an hour, um, and it is well, very, very quiet, very, very refined. So we're gonna come out of this village in a minute, um, and we go up this B road that's going quite heavily subsided in places. So it's very uneven, the road. Again, it's a really good test of the S-Class and the chassis and the suspension and the ride quality. So as we'll leave the village up here, just accelerate. It's quite peaky. Um, it's, uh, and once you get on it, in, in its stride, though, it's, it's quite quick. So going to 60 through here, there you go. A little bit of creaking and movement because obviously it's getting thrown about a lot, but... You see there, really horrible bit that in sports cars and rode that very well. It feels a big car. Steering's really light, uh, overly light. You've no real idea what's going on underneath the car. You just sort of point it in the right direction and just hope the rest of the car follows. Value is where the S-Class, it's just incredible. I mean, there's some, there's some on Auto Trader between one and two thousand pound. Now, there may be a bag of nails, there may be full of rust, and you probably don't want to touch them. But 
this this one say for just over three thousand pound relatively low mileage at 134k um in really good condition both inside and out everything seems to work um and it's just i just think it's incredible incredible value um and then if this gets used and abused during the winter months keeps your pride and joy sports car off the road of the worst of the british winter and tell you the truth on a monday morning even in the summer on a monday morning where you're just wanting to get into work or you're wanting to go to the supermarket or you're wanting to go on that 300 mile journey up north or down south or off to the west coast or whatever it may be then it's just it's just an easy car to drive visibility is great because it's got the sunroof as well there's lots of light coming in even though it's dark black um, leather um, yeah it's a really comfortable place incidentally I forgot to mention as well as well as when you start the car using the key there's actually a, a button on top of the gear stick that um, just with key in hand um, so it's one of the first keyless goes as well you can press the uh, starter button on the gear stick and it'll start the engine again it's all these th th this technology the adaptive speed control the active body control for the suspension the, the air system the, the um, collision avoidance system all these technologies that um, were, were cutting edge 20 years ago It's also got a switch to electrically drop and raise the rear headrests, which I think is a, it's a great idea. If you haven't got rear passengers, you want them down so you've got better visibility. And um, it's also got blinds as well to, to, to go down um, on the rear window. So again, just luxurious touches that you, that you sort of expect from an S-Class. The nervousness is all the technology, I suppose. Cutting edge technology 20 years ago, just be really expensive and I always think Mercedes ergonomics around switch positions and where things are is normally so good and largely this car is quite is, is no different but but the odd for me is actually on the door card where you've got the electric windows buried down below my right knee which are used relatively frequently, but yet the seat adjustment, a mirror adjustment, which is something that you only generally change when drivers change, so I would argue is less, used much less, is in the upper position near my right hand. So it's, I think it's a really odd place to put electric windows. Some of the some of the panels do feel a little bit on the cheaper side. I expected everything feeling top line. Um, luxurious but it's just it's just not quite the same as I experienced with the SL so what I'm going to do is we come out of this junction now just open it up so 20 miles an hour now and just oh that's good and up to 60 so that's really that was relatively impressive relatively impressive that um, now there's a couple of uh, down this road a couple of testing corners one in particular so I'll just push on a bit here see how this takes this B road um, certainly can feel the weight of the car there's one in particular that's uh, off off camber road just through these this left and right yeah you can, you can feel the uh, you can feel the weight of the car you've got to be very cautious this is the one here it's a little right kick than a left hander um, quite a few cars here so just take it in at about 50 miles an hour oh there's a car there. that's just going to stop that unfortunately just see how it loads up yeah <laughs> it's a big car 
there's, you can't get away with that. I think one of the weaknesses of the car is the the traditional torque converter gearbox. Um, at six tenths, it's absolutely fine. As soon as you start pushing on to seven tenths or eight tenths, it just it gets confused. It's too slow. It's not fast enough. Um, you just find yourself in the wrong gear at the wrong time when you need the power, and it all gets a little bit sort of confused. But for me, I think gearbox technology in the last 20 years has advanced much, much quicker, really, than, than engine or anything else in the car. I think gearbox technology has moved on massively in the last 20 years, and this just shows you what the traditional gearboxes were like 20 years ago. So what's my summary of the S320 CDI? Um, a couple of observations, I think. Um, this one has been remapped. So it's lifted power by about 25% over standard. Um, so instead of lifted up from about 195 up to 250. I think it would need it. I think it would need it. Um, it's, it's now quick enough for me, for a big, large car for daily use it's absolutely fine can't question whether 195 is big enough is enough power for such a big heavy car secondly is the technology it's stacked we've mentioned many systems um, and are on the car and all those all that technology is now 20 year old so that technology is now outdated it will be problematic and at the same time in the early 2000s Mercedes weren't known for their brilliant build quality and reliability either and what does that mean well it means in total that actually you've got a car that s classes are down at one two thousand pound for the cheapest this one in good condition with good mileage can still be picked up for between let's say three to four thousand why they're so cheap because of those very reasons The engine itself, it's very refined for a diesel. In fact, it makes a massive case that says, why would you go for a petrol? Where your fuel consumption will only be half as good as what you're getting in the diesel. But for everyday performance, the diesels, certainly with a remap, is providing adequate acceleration with good MPG. So for me, I'd definitely stick with, the, with one of the diesel variants. Is it a sports car? Of course it's not. We know it's not going to be a sports car. It won't offer that. It's too big, it's too heavy, it's too... It's too even going through the corners, it's too floaty. The steering's too light, there's no feedback, etc. But you go back to the fact that you buy what you're buying this car for. This is a, an everyday practicality. The space, the boot that's with, that we've not gone in, is gigantic. Um, it's got space for five four large adults comfortably in luxury um, and it's either that or a Ford Fiesta or a Vauxhall Corsa or something that's very average and very mundane and would I be happy to use this as my daily for the Monday morning grind into work and then the supermarket at the weekends and if somebody managed to dink it by a supermarket trolley or parks too close to me at work car park, I'm not really that bothered. And when the weather's poor and the roads are salty and all the cars getting dirty and filthy, I'm not that bothered because ultimately it's a three or four thousand pound car. I think I'd know what I'd rather have. And it's not the Fiesta or the Corsa. It's one of these. It really is, does bring a different dimension to it. The biggest risk is you've got to go in with eyes wide open. You've got to expect these cars are going to need some money on an annual basis to keep them in this condition. But if you go in with that mindset that you're going to need to spend a few thousand a year to keep these running, it could be the bargain of the century. It'd be a cracking daily. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did, please...
thumbs up, subscribe, stay tuned. Another video next week. Thanks for watching, guys.